Hey, what's going on? This is Sports Truth. I'm your favorite host in the entire world, Jordan Harris. We got some news to talk about. Unfortunately, we lost another one. This time, the person, the player, the athlete, the defensive lineman that we lost is Nigel e. Kelly. Um, let's talk about a few different things in this episode. So first, I want to talk about, I want to go over uh, parts of the article that I read earlier today. Um, then I want to talk about why this actually is a good thing to me. And I know that may sound weird, like we're losing a really good player, so how is that a good thing? And I'll explain how it's a good thing, and I'll explain that partially through a story. Um, and then I'll explain why we probably, as Hurricanes fans, need to get used to this. So I know I'm sure some of y'all are like, what is this fool talking about? How is this a good thing, and why do we need to get used to this? Well, that's why you need to stick around to the end of the show, right? All right, so... Let's go ahead and get into the article now. I'm going to read a few portions of the article written by Brian Smith, whom I'm a big fan of. I think he does excellent work. So he says, defensive end Nigel Lee Kelly is leaving the University of Miami and will look for a new home. Entering his junior season, Kelly is coming off of an unfortunate injury that caused him to miss the majority of the 2023 season. Coming out of Fort Lauderdale, Kelly's recruitment ranking was a four-star, which I think is really important. I always want to know whenever these players are leaving, whenever these players are coming in, I'm always interested to know what their rating was like when they were coming out of high school. Because typically that gives you an idea of how big they were coming out of high school, how fast they may have been. It's all the measurables. Like if you hear a four-star defensive end, you know they're probably a pretty big kid. They could probably move pretty fast to be as big and strong as they were. So that's what the stars tell me usually. It tells me how much, if they're a junior in, in college and they came out of high school as a four-star and they haven't produced yet, that tells me that it just hasn't been the level of development that we're hoping to see, right? Um, says his composite ranking was number 90 in the nation. So he came out with quite a bit of hype out of high school. Then it says Miami is much deeper at the defensive end position that Kelly plays, and perhaps this is why he'll enter the transfer portal. Officially, the spring window opens April 16th, which a whole lot of us are probably kind of nervous, biting their nails, crossing their fingers, don't know who's going to be leaving, don't know what's coming in. But opens April 16th, closes April 30th. And let's talk about his stats a little bit. So Kelly's 2022 stats, he had 11 tackles for – uh, he had 4.5 tackles for loss, and he had four sacks in 2022. So those are decent numbers. In 2023, he was injured a lot. He only played four games, had eight tackles, and one tackle for loss. All right, so that's all that I want to read from the article. Now let's talk about why I believe this is actually a good thing. And it's not because I'm being overly optimistic, which I can be at times, maybe. But I think this can be a good thing, but I want to explain it through a story, actually. So my brother and I, we grew up playing basketball, played too many games of basketball growing up, traveling, doing all that, basketball teams. So when my brother was in middle school, he tried out for the basketball team, and they had, I think, 12 players that made the team, but then they would have like eight to 10 alternates. And those alternates would only suit up like every few games and then they might have a chance to play if one of the main players got hurt. So alternates really didn't make the team. It was just a good way of saying you almost made it, right? So my brother tried out for the middle school team. He did not make the 12. He just made it as an alternate. Hardly ever played the whole year. Heartbreaking, discouraging for everybody in the family, right? Okay, so then my brother got to high school. He didn't make the varsity team as a freshman. He didn't make the varsity team as a sophomore. Didn't make the varsity team as a junior. He ended up making the varsity team as a senior. And he they won the city league, and then they won a state championship uh, as well. He ended up having the game winning block in that game. They were up by maybe, I think, they were up by one point. The guy throws the ball into the goal. My brother comes out of nowhere, blocks it, game winner. It's over. All right, so my brother ends up going to college. You know, he only he was a starter on the on the championship team in high school, but he only averaged maybe seven or eight points, 
hadn't developed his body yet, went to a JUCO, junior college, played a decent amount there, got some okay numbers, maybe average five, six, seven points as a freshman there in college. Then he transferred to a school in Pittsburgh, uh, played really well there, ended up being one of the leading scorers in the entire nation. I think he was like sixth leading scorer in the nation or something. He scored 37 points one game, 27 another game. He was just – his body developed. He stayed in the gym. He just he got really good. It seemed like almost overnight he got really good, right? So then people started to notice him. People started to recruit him a little bit to come play for their Division One schools, a few schools here and there. But my brother was homesick, so he wanted to come back home and play for Wichita State Shockers. That's where we both went to school. We both graduated from there. So he ended up walking on as a Shocker, walked on. Um, as a junior playing college ball. He was a walk-on, so he didn't get a whole lot of love, right? He sat the entire first year. He sat on the bench, hardly ever played at all. So I would always ask him, like, are you playing well in practice? Like, why are you not playing? He was like, I'm playing really good in practice. I don't know why I'm not getting in the game. I don't know what's going on. So at the end of the year, they do what's called exit interviews. So my brother had an exit interview with the head coach. I don't even want to tell you what the head coach's name is because I don't care for him too much. My brother had his exit interview, and the head coach told him, hey, man, you did play extremely well in practice, but what you don't realize is college sports, a lot of the times there's politics to this stuff. So the fact that we brought this kid over from Israel who's going to be a professional basketball player, and we brought him over from Israel, I have to play him. I can never play a walk-on over this prized possession that, that Wichita State just brought in from Israel. That's why you played so well in practice, but I could not put you in the game because the politics of it would make me look so bad starting a, uh, starting a walk-on over this prized possession from Israel who's supposed to be a professional basketball player. That drove me crazy, drove my brother crazy, but it's part of the game, right? So the next year... That coach ended up leaving in the offseason, and a new coach ended up coming in. My brother continued to play really well in practice. Eventually, towards the middle of the season and through the rest of the season, my brother was a starting two guard for a Division I basketball team. The head coach did not care about any kind of politics. He didn't care about where your, who your dad is. He didn't care about how much money your, your parents donate to the college. He didn't care about any of that stuff. All he cared about was who played well and who gave them the best chance of winning. He didn't say, well, you couldn't even make your high, you couldn't even make your middle school team. I'm not going to play you. You couldn't even hardly make your, your varsity team in high school. I'm not going to play you. You didn't really do well in your JUCO. I'm not going to play you. He looked at who was on the team, who played the best, and he played the best player. So all of that to say, I believe this is a good thing because I, it looks like our Hurricanes are tracking – in that direction looks like we're tracking in the direction of i don't care what star i don't care if you're a five star four star i don't care what you are coming in coming from high school i don't care what kind of cachet you have i don't care about what the press is saying about you if you're not performing if you're not putting forth the numbers that we need if you're not drawing double teams we're not going to play you We'll play somebody else. Even if you're a freshman like Ruben Bain and you coming in, if you're putting up better numbers than a highly touted junior or senior, we're going to play Ruben Bain. It looks like we're leaning towards that direction. And if you ask me why I think that, you know, first we got Nigel Lee Kelly, who he was injured, but he wasn't putting forth that. He wasn't putting up those numbers that we really needed him to put up, right? But then even before that, we have Tyler Van Dyke, who was highly touted. People had high expectations for him. He started the season really well. And it took longer. Than, I mean, for me, it took a little longer than it should have. But eventually, the coach did make the right decision and pulled him. He actually pulled him in the biggest moment of the season, playing against Florida State. So that's an even bigger pat on the back, if you ask me, that we should give Chris the ball. So Tyler Van Dyke got pulled. Kelly is all of a sudden leaving. To me, it looks like maybe we are heading towards the right direction of if you are performing, you get to play. If you're not performing, you're not going to play. 
I'm not going – I'm not – you know, it seems like the coach is saying I'm not going to have this mentality of, oh, man, I, you know, I brought you in. I made some promises to you. I'm not going to recruit over you anymore. I'm just going to have some – you know, instead of looking at defensive ends, I'm going to look elsewhere because I brought you in telling you you're going to play your first and second year, so I'm going to let you play. I'm not going to recruit over you. I think those years are over. I do believe, as much as I love Randy Shannon, I think that's part of what hurt him is he brought in players that he cared about, players that he wanted to develop, players that he wanted to perform well, like Ja'Cory Harris, and they just he just didn't perform well. And no matter what, he put him out there. Didn't matter how many interceptions he threw, didn't matter what happened, he played the same players no matter what. And I think that's part of what led to Randy Shannon's demise with the Hurricanes. Um, so, yeah. Nothing's promised. You got to go out there and just perform. I, th I think we're heading towards direction, that direction, which is really, really positive for me. It seems like our coaches are thinking that they are only going to be as loyal to the players as the players perform. You know what I'm saying? So if you perform well, I'll be loyal to you. If you're not performing, hey, I'll help you find a really good destination as far as your transfer goes. But they're not just going to throw players out there anymore, which I think is a huge step in the right direction. So because of that, because of that mentality where it seems like that mentality is shifting, I think we should get used to these players starting to leave. Two different ways, actually. Two different reasons why. For one, as y'all know, man, these, the, the younger guys that's coming in, this younger generation, I hate to sound like an old man, but this younger generation, they're not real big on competition. They have the mentality of, like, I need my position promised to me. And if you're not going to promise this position to me, I'm leaving. And since that is not, you know, since these people aren't going to be getting positions promised to them, I do think that eventually we'll be losing a lot of players. So that's one. The second part of this is I believe because of our recruiting is going through the roof, the way that our recruiting has been looking these last couple years, I think there's more chances of us bringing in young talent that can start over some more experienced players. I don't think it's crazy to assume that JoJo is going to get out there and play this season at, at wide receiver and jump over some people who are more experienced. And when that happens, those players who are more experienced are likely to throw the deuces up and go to SMU. I just, you know, it's just part of the game. I think that's part of what's going to happen here. So these players are going to get upset because they're being overlooked. That's one end. But then on the other end, we're going to be bringing in such high caliber players that you cannot afford to leave these players on the bench because they're performing so well in, in practice. So those are my thoughts on all this. I mean, do I hate to lose a talent like Nigel Lee Kelly? Yeah, I mean, I think anybody who says no is just lying. They just, I don't know what they're doing. They're lying to themselves. But I do think that this is a step in the right direction because stuff is not being promised to people anymore. You have to perform. I know injuries happen, but unfortunately – when injuries do happen, somebody's got to come in and play for you, right? And if that person comes in and plays well, a.k.a. Steve Young, then that person keeps the starting job, you know? So let me know your thoughts on this. Are you upset that Kelly is leaving? Are you just fine because we have a lot of depth in that position? Do you think that this is going to be a trend for our Hurricanes that we need to get used to where a lot of players are going to be leaving, jumping into that transfer portal because there's so many – young studs uh, coming up behind them in the ranks that they feel like they probably should jump out of town. So let me know your thoughts on that. Please do like the video. Subscribe to the channel. I appreciate the view. I get a lot of support in the comment section, and I really do appreciate that. So let's go ahead and end the video by saying what I always say. As my man Jay-Z once said, you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me, and I truly appreciate that. Take care. God bless. Peace. Thank you.